a lot of times we reach the end of the road and we're like, man, I'm not seeing my purpose. Like, God, I, I must have missed it. Or maybe you don't have a purpose for me, you know? And, and I think we, we've we all reached that point. Maybe maybe someone listening right now is, is reaching out today, you know, or they've reached it in the last week. Man, I don't have a purpose. Like, I'm just going to coast through life, just complacent, or maybe just be discouraged, you know? Maybe someone's beat down with discouragement right now. But, but to really take heart and be encouraged that, that God does have a purpose and really it's just just take that one next step. You don't have to take a mile long leap, uh, but just take one little step. Um, he's nudging you right now and just take that next step and just walk on in faith. Know that he's with you, um, that he will always be with you and that he will continue to guide you. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. have a very special guest today, Ben Malcolmson. And before we tie, dive in with that, um, a couple people have asked me where Robert Watson is. That's the teaching pastor here at Sun Valley. He's actually on sabbatical. And so shout out to you, Robert, if you're listening. Hope you're chilling out and enjoying your family. Robert's been here for 20 years, two months longer than me. So he'll be back here in the next month or so. You can give him a high five and Hug him and welcome him back to our church. But Ben, good to have you today, man. It's great to be here. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, so Ben spoke um, here recently at Sun Valley, uh, was a walk-on at USC, spent some time with the Seahawks and with Pete Carroll, and uh, you and I met in Alpha. Is that when we originally met? That's right, yeah. Alpha group back in the fall. Yeah, so Ben's wife is friends with my wife, and then we wound up being in an Alpha group together, leading it together. And got to know Ben, and then you were my uh, my rooted small group leader. Yeah, well, I don't know if I was your small group leader, but <laughs> well, yeah, you, we, we were in a rooted group together. How about that? <laughs> yeah, you you led it, and just a little bit of your background, and then we'll dive into what we're going to talk about today. So you're from Texas, grew up in Dallas. In Shout Dallas. out, Chad. Yeah, to Dallas. So Ben yeah. and I grew, both grew up in Dallas. But what part of Dallas did you grow I grew up? Grew up in Highland Park. In Highland Park. Okay. Yeah. If you don't know the Dallas area... We don't need to talk about this, Jack. Come on. Highland Park's where the <laughs> fancy people live. I grew up in Mesquite, Texas, where the fancy people do not live. You so. got a rodeo, though. Well, like I just said, where the fancy people do not <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to the Mesquite yeah, Rodeo? Yeah, many times. It's really? Awesome. Yeah, the Mesquite I, Rodeo. It's awesome. I think I've been like twice. I've probably been more than you. <laughs> yeah. So when you were a kid, like in Highland Park, was your family like, hey, let's drive to the other side of the tracks and put on let's, our jeans? Let's drive to the, the boondocks and go out and see <laughs> the country folk out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. So uh, amazing story. If you haven't picked up, I'm, I'm going to do a shameless plug for your book. If you haven't picked up Ben's book, Walk On, uh, do that. And actually, if you have a junior high or high school student, uh, read, read it with them and talk about it. It's a really good book, his story. But really, your story, your testimony, the book, at the end of the day, if you boil it all down, it's about doing what God tells you to do. And so let's talk about that a little bit today. And you gave like these three kind of big things to think about in the realm of doing what God tells you to do and then the realm of obedience. And so let's talk about those and then kind of break them down. I love it. Sound love good? It. Yeah. Yeah. So what, remind me the first yeah, one. Yeah. So the first one, your, your presence is your purpose. So God has you exactly where he's called you to be. So w whatever neighborhood you're in, whatever school you go to, whatever workplace you find yourself in, whoever your friend group is, God has called you there for a purpose. So your purpose isn't to go and create and do something crazy. It's just to be present and to be exactly where God has called you and to be with those people right there. Um, so that's number one. Your presence is your purpose. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. So just to keep it real, right, on Easter, I'm showing your picture, you know, on the sidelines and you in your uniform at USC and then you standing next to Pete Carroll, right? Yeah. So somebody like you... We're going to go, most people, of course your presence is your purpose because you're a big deal, Ben, <laughs> like like an author and NFL and, 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 and all of this, but it didn't start off that way for you. No, not at all. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, did you ever think you would be no, in the NFL? No, obviously not. It's, it, I mean, it's a crazy story. I'm sure many 
folks listening here heard it on over the weekend uh, that I shared it. Um, and I mean, I, I grew up a, a track athlete. I was too small to play any sport. You know, I, I could run. That was all I could do. And so that's what I grew up doing. And then I went to college, um, just trying to find my way. I changed my major four times freshman year. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was just trying to figure out. I got out. to hear it. What were the four majors? Uh, first one was Spanish. Because really? I, yeah, because I it was one you didn't have to apply for. You could just <laughs> you just went with it. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't have to like a, get into a, a business school or engineering school. I could just get, become a Spanish major, and I figured growing up in Texas, going to school in California, it's it's useful. That makes uh, sense. Like two weeks into my first Spanish class, I was like, "This is not for me." You know, like college Spanish is different than high school Spanish. So um, then it switched to international relations. I don't because I was in an international relations class, I guess. Um, then it switched to undecided. Um, then it switched to journalism, which okay. is what I ended up doing. So, um, okay. yeah. so I, I, I'm going to bring this up because so a lot of young adults that I talk to right now, they're like freaking out because they think they're going to make the wrong decision about school or major or, yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. So what you're saying is you didn't have a freaking clue. And I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My job now, I work in finance, you know, <laughs> like yeah. it's it's the craziest journey. And, and it, I mean, it just goes to show it's like you don't have to have it figured out when you're 18 years old. You don't have to have it figured out when you're 30 years old or 40 years old. We never we don't we never have it all figured out. So it's just it's just about being on that journey. Yeah. So your presence is your purpose. So not to put words in your mouth, but it, just to make sure I understand. So wherever you are, that's where God has you. Yeah. And there's purpose in there. There's that. 100% purpose in there. Like your neighbors, who, who lives next to you, you know, mm. God has a purpose for you right there. Yeah. And, it, and it's not some like grand plan, like the, the heavens are going to open up. Maybe they will, you know, but usually it's just becoming friends with someone, you know, a coworker who sits at the desk next to you. Just something simple, like those very simple moments, like your presence, like God, where God has you, where, where his presence is, where your presence is right there, that's where your purpose is. Do you feel like, do you think... And I do, which is probably why I'm asking the question, that that people miss a lot of their purpose because they keep waiting on the big thing. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I've, I've done that a million times in my life. You know, you're, you're waiting for the next big job or the next big audible voice from God. God, show me my purpose, you know, like show me what my purpose is here in life. And I think most often it's just those tiny little steps through your day. You know, it's just yeah. those little interactions through your day. And they all eventually over time they add up. And that's what that story I got to share um, over the weekend um, speaks to is that those little tiny steps add up over time. Yeah, I think um, and I'll just apologize for everybody that has my job, preachers and pastors. Um, There's this idea that we're all supposed to be living this radical life for Jesus. And for some reason, we leave out the verses in the New Testament that say, actually, live a quiet life. Yeah, yeah. Love your family well. Yep. Um, be open and win some with outsiders. Yes. Make the most of every opportunity. There, there's much more scripture about that yes. than these big radical moves. 100%. Yeah. It's not like, okay, we need to go find the next revival movement and go go all in there. Maybe it is. You know, maybe for some of us it is. But for most of us, it's waking up, treating our family right, treating our neighbors right, going to work going to school, you know, like all the things that God just had, like those, the monotony of the day-to-day life. What if it's not monotony? What if there's like true, like heavenly purpose in each Absolutely. of those moments? Absolutely. I, um, uh, I don't know where I read this. It was Eugene Peterson. If you don't know who that is, he's, he's the guy that, uh, did the paraphrase the message, which if you're new to the Bible, that's a really easy Bible to read and understand. Uh, it's called The Message. But he talks about what you just said, and he calls it long obedience in the same direction. Mm, that's good. Of just this this faithfulness every day. But what happens is those things compound. And over time, you look back and you see all that God did, but it doesn't feel big No. Yeah, in the moment. Yeah. And that's like, because we're human, you know, we have this very narrow perspective but like when we kind of pull ourselves back and we get those moments through life where you, you kind of look back and you're like, whoa, like God did have a purpose for me there. And we need those reminders, you know, we need those reminders so that when we're in the, the doldrums of life, it's like, okay, what if I'm in those moments right now? I just don't realize it, you know? And so having moments and hearing stories of, of what God is doing, the, the purpose that he has for us reminds us that, okay, even in my meaningless, seemingly meaningless moments of life, there is purpose there. And we just, we constantly need to remind ourselves and, and encourage ourselves with that. Yeah. 
Your presence is your purpose. Yeah. And then the, the, the kicker to that, though, is that as a follower of Jesus, he puts his presence in you. And so it's not just your presence is your purpose, but it's your presence is your purpose because his presence is in you yeah. and dictating your steps and nudging you along and guiding you and, and giving you courage and giving you strength and giving you energy and, and fresh ideas and whatever it may be and just giving you love for the people around you. And so it's your presence is your purpose, but it's really his presence through you is your purpose. And so just a, the reminder that, that you're not doing this alone, that his presence is in you and uh, shining through you and, and living through you. Yeah. So for some of us, it could be um, choose to bloom where you're planted. God has you there for a reason. And for some of us, it could be you keep waiting on the big thing when there are a whole lot of small things right in front of you Yeah. Uh, that God is really in and you're missing it because you're waiting on the big thing. Amen. Yeah. You're preaching, Chad. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your presence is your purpose. That's great. And then what was the second? God whispers through nudges. Okay. So I think a lot of times we are waiting for the audible voice of God or to read something in scripture and just to like scream at us or, or someone to come up and be like, Hey, I have a word for you. You know, like I've got this, God spoke to me for you. And I think we wait for that and, and eagerly. So, I mean, it's, it would be awesome if, if that happened all the time, but I think a lot of the times God's just nudging us, you know, he just nudging our hearts, just a little knock on the door, just a little nudge here and there. Someone comes to mind, um, just a little thing happens on your heart where it's like, oh, I should reach out to that person or I should, I should go talk to this person or, or follow up with, with whoever, you know, whatever it may be. And these little tiny nudges, God's whispering th- to us. Um, and really because he, he wants to achieve his purposes through us. Mm-hmm. And it's those little tiny nudges. I mean, the, the Bible talks about the still small voice of God. And really it's, it's those, that still small voice of God through those little nudges on your heart um, really lead us in, our, in, in achieving the purpose that God has for us. Yeah. I'm thinking of, as you're talking about that, there's this moment with Elijah, this famous prophet in the Old Testament, if you're unfamiliar with the Bible. And he's led to this place, this cave, because God's going to meet him there. And it's like earth, wind, and fire. Like there's a, the earth shakes, but God's voice was not in it, the Bible says. And then there was a great wind, but God's voice was, was not, not in it. And there, and there were these big things. But then it says when God's voice came, uh, it was a whisper. Yeah. It was the still small. That's where that phrase comes from. It was the still small voice of, of God. Yeah. And uh, I, I know that um, in my experiences, those moments where I look back and go, oh, yeah, that, that was God. <laughs> like, I didn't come up with that. Um, it hasn't been this big earth shaking yeah. revelation. Yep. It, it was, it was a nudge. Yep. Those tiny little nudges. And yeah. it's crazy when, when we are obedient to those nudges, oftentimes you'll get more nudges, you know, mm-hmm. it's, but when we are like, oh, it's nothing, you know, like, and just kind of shut it out. It, it's hard to start picking up the nudge again. Cause you've, you've kind of lost the tune, you know, but when yeah. you tune yourself into those nudges, it's like the domino effect, you know, it's like you take that one little nudge and then there's another nudge and there's another nudge, you know, it's just this incredible adventure. Yeah. When somebody asks me, so how, how can I learn to, to hear those nudges? My response is always experience. Yeah, that's so Which is true. in essence what you just said. So if you, if you feel like you have one of those, let's break this down, try to make it as practical as we can. So when you have a nudge and you think that might be God, yeah. what, do you, what do you do with that? Yeah, well, okay, I'm thinking of a, like an example that happened recently for me where it was like someone came to mind, like a friend of mine came to mind who I hadn't talked to in a couple months, you know, two, three months. Hadn't even thought of him in a couple months, you know. And it was like he just came to mind. And I was like, oh, I don't know why. Like maybe I saw something on TV that reminded me of him or whatever it was, you know. But it was like it was just it stuck with me for a couple like a couple minutes, you know. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to text him, you know. And yeah. I text him and I'm like, hey, you just came to mind. How are you doing? And it meant the world to him, you know, like he, he needed to talk to me about something, you know, and, and I hadn't talked to him in months. Like I had no idea where he was at in life, what he was doing, um, what was going on, like in his day to day life. But that little nudge led us to catch up and have a conversation. And it's not like we reunited and became instant best friends all over again. And we're talking all the time. It was just that one little moment of conversation led to just an incredible moment. It was like a reminder for me, like, 
oh, God wanted me to to just reach out to him just to so that he knew that someone was thinking about him, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it happens too. Like if I have a dream about someone, I wake up the next morning and I'm like, that's weird. Like I've, I, didn't, I haven't seen that person in a while, you know? I'll text them, you know? And it's it could be nothing. Sometimes it is nothing, but sometimes it's like, oh, wow, thank you so much. Like it's great to hear from you. Like how are you doing, you know? And just that there's, there's something that happens there that, that's just a little slice of heaven, I think. Yeah, they needed encouragement. Yeah. Something was going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just to... When someone reaches out to you and they're like, hey, I'm just thinking about you, it means the world, you know? And just something simple like that, like, it's not like there's no expectations. There's no, like, okay, I've got to go, like, meet up with this person, fly wherever they're at. No, it's just just a little text or a little phone call here and there. And just, um, I think it goes a long way and just helping each other. Yeah, I got a story along those lines that uh, was really impactful to me personally. And actually, it was your uh, your former CEO uh, he's the chairman, I think, of the company where you work, uh, Steve, Steve Brown. So Steve and I have been friends for a long, long time. And right before I came to Sun Valley, uh, the place where I was working, I was like, uh, so So this is years ago, uh, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. Uh, when Katrina, you were 12 years old? When I was 12 years old. Yeah. Katrina was, uh, I was 31. Oh, wow. Um, Katrina was pregnant with... No, not pregnant with Joshua. We had Joshua. He was a year old. Um, I was working for this company, and uh, it was a nonprofit. I was raising money. I wasn't making very much money. And in a week's time, I got three different job offers, and I wasn't looking for another job. I had in my mind I was done working where I was working, and so I thought this is going to be coming to an end soon. But in some ways, out of the blue, I got these three job offers. And one was uh, working for a church in town. One was coming to Sun Valley, moved to Arizona from Texas. And the other one was uh, to be, a, in essence, a headhunter for a medical recruiting firm where I would recruit surgeons from other hospitals to come and work for, you know, the client of the company that I would work for. And so that one was going to be, like, really lucrative. Um to keep the job, I would make like 150 grand the first year. And at that time in our lives, that was a massive amount of money. Yeah. And then if I was any good at it, I could make, you know, two, 300 grand a year. So that one was really attractive. The church locally, oh, well, maybe God wants me to get back in church. And then, and then Arizona. So here's the story. Steve gets a nudge. We haven't talked in years, but he gets one of those little whispered nudges you're talking about. And he calls me out of the blue and says, how you doing? And I say, I'm good. He says, you're on my mind. Just thought I'd call and check on you. And I say, do you know what's going on? Like if I <laughs> talk to somebody that, and he goes, no, I have no idea. So I tell him about these three opportunities. And Steve's uh, a little older than I am. And uh, he's somebody that I, I've always had respect for. And he said, here's the deal, Chad. He said, I know you want to make some money. You got a new kid and, you know, you're figuring all that out. He goes, but God's called you to preach. He said, he's called you to speak. He said, anybody that's heard you do that's kind of a no-brainer. He said, so don't let money be a distraction to that. And then, you know, we talked about the opportunity where I lived, and then we talked about the opportunity in, in Arizona. But long story medium, it was that phone call. Well, Because as a 30-year-old, 31-year-old, the opportunity to make some money was a big deal. Uh, to stay local was a big deal, but I think I knew kind of in my heart God wanted me to come to Arizona, but it was Steve's phone call that kind of helped push wow. me over the line. Wow. Yeah, and I've told him this story before, but it was as simple as what you're talking about. Yeah. If he had not listened to that whisper, that nudge, yeah. there is a chance you and I wouldn't be sitting here right yes. now. Yes, that's so crazy. And when he got that nudge, I guarantee it wasn't like the audible voice of God. No. And it wasn't, He's he's not calling you to to make some grand speech. He just wanted to call you and, and catch up, you know? Like, yeah. It was literally, you're on my mind. Yeah. Just felt That's like crazy. I was supposed to call you. That's the way God works. Yeah. That's so cool. So Steve, if you're listening, thanks. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> so your purpose is your presence. Second one is listen to those. Yeah. God whispers through those nudges. Yeah. And then what was the third one? Just take the next step. Take so, the next step. Yeah. So if you're listening right now, or maybe you, you heard the talk over the weekend uh, at Sun Valley, um, God's 
nudging you to something right now. There's, there's something on your heart that he's nudging you to and just take the next step. Um, most often it's going to be something small. Just, just take that next step. Um, people always talked about the, the whole walk on story. I mean, the, for those that aren't familiar, there's on a college team, there's scholarship players, guys who are all their tuition, their room and board, everything's paid for. And, and that's part of, of them playing for the school there. But then there's a, a handful of walk ons on the team, guys that kind of walk onto the team that, and they've got to pay their own way and, and be a part of that. And, and that's what I had the opportunity to do there at USC, um, during that one season. And, um, the name of the book is walk on. And it's obviously in, 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 kind of in shout out to, uh, to being a walk on, but really it's a double meaning. It's really just walk on, like keep taking those steps, keep mm-hmm. taking that step of faith. Because a, a lot of times we reach the end of the road and we're like, man, I'm not seeing my purpose. Like God, I, I must've missed it. Or maybe you don't have a purpose for me, you know? And, and I think we, we've all reached that point. Maybe, maybe someone listening right now is, is reaching that today, you know, or they've reached it in the last week, man, I don't have a purpose. Like I'm just going to coast through life, just complacent, or maybe just be discouraged, you know, maybe someone's beat down with discouragement right now, but, but to really take heart and be encouraged that, that God does have a purpose. And really it's just, just take that one next step. You don't have to take a mile long leap, uh, but just take one little step. Um, he's nudging you right now and just take that next step and just walk on in faith. Know that he's with you, um, that he will always be with you and that he will continue to guide you. Yeah. It's such a good word. So if you missed it on the weekend that Ben spoke, the series is called Courageous Faith. You can look it up uh, on Sun Valley's website. And uh, he's the first week of that series. And so if you're listening to this months later or whatever, just check out that weekend, Courageous Faith. It's the first weekend of, of the series. So I am, I am going to ask you this, right? So uh, did you go on to become an NFL player as a walk-on at USC? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, yeah, my, my football career was very short. It was one year. Um, played one play. Um, didn't really do anything of, of note uh, in, the, in the worldly sense, in the football sense. Um, but <clears throat> as that story spoke to that, that share, got to share at Sun Valley over the weekend. And then also, uh, in that book is just, God had a purpose that was far greater than one season of football or, or anything that I could have ever imagined. Um, so I ended up, uh, working for the football team at USC, just with my journalism degree, Pete Carroll, who's head coach of USC at the time, asked me to, to kind of run the, the online media for the football team. It was right mid 2000s. So it was right when online media was really starting to take off. Social media was just being born then. And, um, at that time, websites for sports teams were like the schedule and the roster. That's it. You know, and he had this idea, well, why don't we create like our own news site? You know, like mm-hmm. all news all about the team. And he's like, you're the perfect person to run it. Cause you got a jur- journalism degree. You've been on the inside, you know what it's like. Why, do you want to do it? And I, before we even like talked about salary or anything, I was like, yes, count me in. Cause I was 22 years old. It was my first job. And I was like, let's do it. You know, this is an incredible opportunity. And through all that, it was just, it, he became so enamored with it. And it was just so excited about it. Cause it's like instant connection with fans. You know, you don't have to go through the, the newspaper reporter or wait for the press conference or, or get on ESPN. It's like, no, you can instantly connect with your fans, which is commonplace. Now these days you just, you tweet something or put something up on social media or whatever, and it's like instant connection. But 15, 20 years ago, that was not that way. And so he became so enamored with it that he he moved my desk inside his office, like literally inside his office. And so for 12, 14 hours a day, we're just, it was a kind of a mind meld, you know, we're just throwing things off each other. And I, mean, I was 22, 23, 24 years old. And he's, here's this legendary football coach. And he's just, try this, put this out online. You know, he was yeah. just so excited about it. And through that, we developed an incredible relationship, you know, just incredible. He was kind of like a second dad to me and just a great friendship. And then three years of working alongside of him, literally my desk in his, like literally in his office, um, he's, he calls me one day and he's like, hey, I'm taking the job with the Seattle Seahawks. I want you to come up there with me. And I, was, I thought he was going to be at USC forever. You know, I thought he was going to be the John Wooden of college football and, and be yeah. at USC for 30 years and win a bunch of championships and all that. And I thought that was going to be my life, you know, and. Um, that was definitely a shakeup and ended up moving up to Seattle with him and, and worked for him in Seattle kind of as his, his right hand guy for the next 11 years from there. So um, just an incredible journey that, that started with a tiny little nudge as a senior in, in college. Yeah, that's amazing. If you missed it, please listen to Ben tell that story that weekend and pick up the book. It's a great book. What I, I love that you do in the book, Ben, is those little um, action steps, things to think about, pray about at the end of each chapter. 
um, I just think that's that's a gold. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, I mean, I wrote it really, I, I wrote it for myself, you know, like I wrote it. I wish when I was 16 years old, I had a book like that just because I'm fumbling around as a 16 year old, 17 year old, 18 year old, trying to find my, like find my way through faith, you know? And like, does God have a purpose for me? Like, sure. Like I've got this ticket to heaven now that I've put my faith in Jesus, but like, what about in the in between time, you know, <laughs> like yeah. what about however many years he gives me here on earth? Like, do I have a purpose here? You know, and and so really, it's it's written for a a teenager, you know, trying to find their purpose, and and really, um, I think it's written for all of us, to be honest. You know, like I I'm the one who needs to be reminded of this story every day, um, just that that even when you can't see it, God does have a purpose, that He is at work through you. Um, most of the time, you're not going to see the fruit to your labor, but He is at work and He is achieving an incredible purpose through you. Well, let's walk through it again. So your presence is your purpose. Yep. Um, listen to those nudges and whispers. Yeah, yep. Say again how you said it. God whispers through nudges. Whispers through nudges and then take the next step. Just take the next step. Excellent. Just take the next step. Yeah. I think we way overcomplicated. It's so true. It's it's way more simple than we than we try to make it. It really is. I, that's what I love about your messages, Chad, is just it, it, so often you walk out and it's like, wow, he simplified that so perfectly. <laughs> like it's yeah. just, it's just an incredible reminder that it, like, we don't have to go to seminary theology school, you know, whatever it is, like have a perfect theology to like really take that next step. It's like, no, just, just so simple. Like just listen for God and listen for that nudge and take the next step. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right. Check out the book, Walk On by Ben Malcolmson. Listen to that uh, weekend and that Courageous Faith series. And Ben, will you take a moment and just pray for all of us? Definitely. That we will understand God has us where we are right now and that we'll listen to his voice and take those steps. Definitely. Thanks, man. Let's pray. God, we thank you for bringing us here in this moment. Thank you for wherever we're listening from right now, that you are nudging our hearts, that you have an incredible purpose for us. And encourage us, inspire us to just take that next, ne that next tiny little step, whatever it may be. Thank you, God, for calling us your children, for calling us your sons and daughters, for giving us a purpose here on earth uh, to change lives of the people around us. For your glory and your honor. It's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you like this video, leave us a comment and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.